Look at what a house costs today. Look at what a car costs today. Look at what everything costs today. And then look at wages are not keeping up with what people need. So today in particular, people don't think that they can find the money to save. They just don't think they can. Inflation is still raging, the cost of borrowing is rising month after month, and a potential recession is on everyone's minds. And according to the Federal Reserve, almost half of Americans don't have enough money to cover an emergency, even a small one. I'm Lauren Bird, and I'm a reporter with MoneyWise, and I'm here with personal finance expert Susie Orman. She's the host of the Women and Money podcast and veteran entrepreneur and CEO Devin Miller. They co-founded SecureSave. It's a company that's trying to help workers save up for that next emergency. So there's a lot going on right now that makes it difficult to save. There's even a couple proposals before Congress that are working on helping people do that. We'll talk about that uh, in a few minutes. But first, Susie, what's happening that that's even necessary? Have we reached a tipping point where Americans have gone from not just not saving, but maybe being unable to save? That has been true forever. Nobody has ever saved, truthfully. You know, if you look at the savings rate, we were up for the past two years because of the stimulus that the government was giving us. But throughout my entire career, all 40 years, I've always been, you need a, a savings account, you need an emergency savings account, you need this, you need to get out of debt. People don't do it on their own. Sure, sure, some people do. But the majority of people, not just now, but forever, nobody ever, the majority of the people in the United States have never had more than $400 in a savings account to their name. So if something happened, an emergency happened, they wouldn't have that money. So this is not a new phenomenon. You know, it may feel like it's new, um, because inflation, many people alive today never experienced inflation back in the 70s and when inflation was around. And now they're going, oh, my God, inflation's eating up our money. But this is an age old problem with a seriously new solution by the name of Secure Save. So I guess, you know, when we look at those obstacles, what are some of the biggest challenges and obstacles facing people trying to save? There's a hesitation about how much you have, how much you don't have. And it's money is still this topic that's very diff difficult to personalize and talk about. And one of the reasons is now it's very difficult for people. Look at what rent is today. Look at what a house costs today. Look at what a car costs today. Look at what everything costs today. And then look at wages are not keeping up with what people need. So today in particular, people don't think that they can find the money to save. They just don't think they can. And unless it's automated for them, and automated from their paycheck, from work, chances are they are never, ever, ever going to do it. So you think there should be more of a conversation around it, people having more ease to be able to talk about how much money they have and how much they can save? There's always been a problem about talking about money. Like I'll never forget, I was on The View and then Barbara Walters was there and the other three women were there and we were talking about money. And they were like, so I said, so how much do you make? I thought Barbara Walters was gonna die on the spot. God forbid we should know how much money everybody makes. By not knowing and not talking about money, that in my opinion is how the system keeps us down because you don't know if the person next to you who's doing less than you is making more than you. So yeah, we should be able to talk about money more freely than any topic out there, because the topic of money is what affects every single one of our lives in every possible way. And so 
it's not this hidden thing. It's not this thing. It's like, you know, normally when I give a talk, I ask people, so how much debt do you all have? In fact, stand up if you have debt. And 100% of the room stands up. And then I ask them to tell each other. And then you hear them for the first time in their lives telling each other what they don't have versus pretending what they do have by charging you know, their clothes on their credit cards, a fancy house on their mortgages, a car they're leasing, and everything else around. So you want to get real about money? That's how you get real about money, by talking about the truth of it. And the truth of the matter is nobody, the majority of Americans today, do not have an emergency savings account. And if, God forbid, their car broke down, if they, you know, they got sick, they just needed a little item, two or three hundred dollars. That would send them to a loan from their 401k or a payday loan or into credit card debt. I think part of what we've ended up, the situation we've ended up in as a society is, is that people get core solutions through work, retirement, healthcare are great examples. And those are complicated things that people need to talk about. And it basically, we got to the point where as a country, those conversations happen at work. They happen through work. You get nudged into those kind of directions. And short-term savings is one of those where people, I think, benefit from that nudge. If you learn about the behavior of saving and are given an easier path to do it through work, we've proven with healthcare, with retirement, that employees will end up in a better position if that nudge happens that way that way. And so that's generally, I think, why it is important to talk about this stuff. We've been able to make a big impact on healthcare and on retirement in this country by making it a workplace conversation and creating a safe place to do that. Um, and we think there's a great ability to create a better outcome around short-term emergency savings by making it a topic at work. So how do you do that? How does Secure Save work? So we work by making this one topic as easy and as automated and as simple to talk about and understand as possible. So there's something very emotional about emergency savings. It's one of those things where people, you know, and it's in our name, they want to feel and be secure. Uh, and the best way to do that is having an emergency savings account. And so we basically have built what we believe is the best possible emergency savings account solution out there. And we just listen to people to what they need. And what they want is something that is easy and automatic. And so we do that by doing nothing but emergency savings. We just do this one thing. We make it automatic by connecting it to payroll. So an employer will invite their employees to join Secure Save. So that's that little nudge like, hey, here's this great thing. You should join. Makes it easier to get started. It's free to the employee. We don't charge the employee anything. They could use the dollars that go in for anything they want at any time for any reason. And then typically there's an incentive like within a 401k or an HSA where the employer is matching or providing some dollars into the account. A little bit of money goes a long way. We usually see about $100 per employee per year. But it's done in like a drip campaign. So if you put in $25, your employer is going to put in five. So it's not a lot of money, but it creates that incentive to start and to stick with it. And all of these ingredients mixed in. Great ease, a lot of automation, a free account that you can use and access at any time with a little bit of an incentive creates tremendous outcomes. And so we get almost 60%, 60% adoption with employers. People stick with it. It's very sticky. Um, and they really save. They put in more money than they take out. And they love it. They get it. They understand it. And our mission is fulfilled. They feel it are more financially secure from using it. How long is it usually before people start to tap into that emergency fund? And how much are they taking out? There's a couple of different ways to look at it. Most of our users, the vast majority, barely touch it. And so we'll call them and say, hey, you've been using this for months and you're using like you're logging in. But how come you haven't taken any money? And they almost always verbatim say, I haven't had an emergency yet. And so there's a lot of like success that comes from that really focused product. And so most people just don't touch it, but they're very aware of it. There is a minority that do use those funds. And usually it takes several months, which is fine. Four months will go by before they declare an emergency. And what's interesting, Lauren, they take very specific amounts. They take $148, $199. So they've had a very specific emergency financially that they're trying to either 
cover or reimburse themselves. But when they do take money, they almost always leave the auto save on so the connection to the payroll. They don't drain the account. And so it works very successfully um, in order to get those people to save and, and to use it. And it's it's exactly what we were hoping for. So they're taking exactly what they need for their emergency. Interesting. Yeah. So it's what's what's cool is is that you know we were starting this product and we we're telling people about what we were hoping to happen. They're like, it's not going to work. Poor people are poor. They won't save. That's why they're poor. They don't. They can't do it. Like, no, that's not true. Um, as Susie said, they need the nudge. They need the automation. You know, I can make it easy for them. And the second was is that people thought, okay, great. Even if you do get them to adopt. They're just going to raid the account. So they're just going to take the free money and they're going to run with it. And nobody's going to actually like save on a consistent behavior. It's just going to be a turnstile. And that's just not true. And what's interesting is because people want this. They want to save. You just got to make it really easy and appeal to their kind of emotional side of, I want to feel like I'm actually saving and being successful and making progress. And they don't want that feeling to go away when they start. And once they make room for it, they'll stick with it. And that's exactly what we see. Yeah. So it's about sort of creating those habits. How important, Susie, is it to create those habits right now where we're seeing um, interest rates go up and the cost of borrowing going up? Um, you know, if you're if you're dipping into your credit card to pay off an emergency fund, um, how how risky could that be at this time? Really risky because, as you probably know, the feds are probably going to raise at least two more times. It is not improbable that come April of next year that the Fed funds, Fed funds rate could be very close to 5%, which means interest rates on credit cards could be way up there. Mortgages that are currently at 7% as we're recording this could easily be at 8 or 9%. And even though interest rates on savings accounts are going up, if you don't have any money to save, it does not matter what they're paying you in a savings account. And so what we've realized with Secure Save is that in the same way when 401k plans first came out, you know, I first became a stockbroker in 1980. And that was when 401k plans first started to come on the scene. Everybody still who worked had what was called a defined benefit program where they were going to get a pension when they retired. And the company paid for that. Then the company figured out, you know what? There's a better way for us to do this. We're going to put the future of our employees' retirement in their hands. So they got rid of the responsibility of having to fund pension plans and let them, the employee really fund their retirement account. But then they came up with and will incentivize them to do so by matching up to about 6% of their base pay. That is the reason why employees started to put money into 401k plans, not to save for their retirement but to get free money. And it worked really, really well. That's when we came along and said, oh my God, if that worked for 401k plans, it would also work for emergency savings accounts. That if we simply went to an employer and we said to them, we have a way to make your employees more secure, more powerful and better employees, and it's not going to cost you hardly anything. Are you interested? And they wanted to know what we were talking about. And we said, if we could simply connect with your payroll and automatically the employee chooses an amount that they want deducted from their paycheck, every single paycheck, most employees do $25, maybe $50 a paycheck. And you, employer, match that amount by whatever you feel comfortable with. So we just had a company that signed up with us that for every $25, right, for the $25 deduction from the paycheck, they're giving their employee $5. That's a 20% return on that employee's money. Once the employee hears that, they sign up. In fact, that company that's doing that, 
I think we deployed them a week or so ago, 100% of all 450 employees signed up within a week. If you look at other programs that corporations are offering, you can go and watch videos and get educated on this and do that. They don't work. This is one benefit, just like the 401k with the match worked. This is one benefit that every employee needs, they want. It's simple for the employer. It doesn't cost the employee a penny. They can get at their money anytime they want. If they leave where they're working, they can take it with them. They can check it every day. They love to check their money. And once the employee sees their money growing, $25 a paycheck. Now in one month, maybe they have $50 or $60 saved in one year. We found that most of these people have almost $1,000 for the first time in their account. They don't want that to go under $1,000. It makes them feel secure. And the reason that a secure employee is a better employee is that when you have financial stress, something's come up and you don't have the money to handle it, you think you're concentrating on work? You think that you're really where you're supposed to be? Or are you in financial la-la land trying to figure out what am I going to do? This money is due tomorrow. So when they have a place to go, they know that their employer cares about them. They start to care about themselves. They don't even miss the $25 a paycheck. And then a lot of times they come back and say, I'll raise it to $30 then $40. They like saving. What are the consequences then of not using, of not having that savings account, of not maybe using something like secure save? Um, how, you know, how, how bad can it be if you don't have that fund? Bad, really bad, right? So here you, so, so, so you're driving in your car and your battery dies and now your car can't go anywhere and you have to get to work and you don't have the money to do it. Now, I live in Florida as well as where I live in the Bahamas, and we have a woman who works at the front desk when you walk in, and she looked horrible. And I said, what's wrong? And she said, my car broke down. I said, well, what happened? She said, my battery went dead. I said, yeah. And she said, I don't have $200 to fix the battery. So I said, so how are you getting to work? She said, I'm Ubering. And I said, and how much does that cost you? She said, well, I'm putting it on my credit card. And I said, and how much have you done there? And she didn't have quite what it took for her to go, oh, I should just put my battery on the credit card. So I'm like, why didn't you put the battery on the credit card? She said, because they had to tow my car. And to get it out, I had all these tickets. And I have to pay the tickets before I can get out of the car, before I can get my car back. So now I have to Uber and now I'm almost $1,100 in debt. And it's going to get worse for her as well. I said, why didn't you pay the tickets when you got the tickets? She said, I didn't have the money to pay the tickets. But do you see how it can snowball? You don't have the money to pay a ticket. And then you don't have the money to pay even more tickets. Why were you getting tickets? I parked at a meter because I didn't have the money to park in a parking lot. Yeah. Do you, does a fear of the recession compound that right now? Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's just one real life example. There are many like that. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's showing up with employers that we're talking to. I mean, we talk to employers all the time. We're seeing a big increase in 401k loans, people looking for payday advances, uh, you know, um, missing work is, you know, multiple shifts that they're trying to take. I mean, definitely there are companies that that we talk to every day that are seeing sure signs that their employees are stressed fr from the what's going on in the economy. But if you just look at the, the stats of what people report themselves, they're, and this has been true for decades, their number one source of stress is short-term money. But right now, their number one financial priority to try and address that stress in the current environment is they want to improve their emergency savings. And so, when it comes to benefits that an employer can offer, when we ask people again, okay, so what could your employer do could do to help? 
they put emergency savings up there with 401k, with healthcare improvements, over any benefit by like a factor of five or six X over anything else. So this is by far the most popular or tied with the most popular investments an employer can be making into their employees outside of just outright paying them more. But, you know, I was talking to someone this morning, I mean, with inflation right now, looking at, you know, eight to 9% year over year, let's say, companies can't give an eight to 9% cost of living adjustments. And so what are you going to do to try and make a dent into your employee's financial situation. And this is something that they can do that will put them on a path to help themselves, to prevent what Susie talked about, of that negative snowball mentality. I want you to think back to the pandemic for a second. When the government allowed people to take money out of their retirement accounts up to $100,000 and have three years to pay it back without any tax consequences or penalties. Now, what does that tell you? It tells you that people did not have an emergency savings account and that during a recession, during something that really made it difficult, if you didn't have a paycheck coming in, the government had to come to our aid. And as time goes on, if the markets, let's say, do continue down, obviously they're going to have their great weeks. But overall, if the trend of the market is still down and people who are working today are watching their 401ks go down 10%, 20%, 50%, you can mark my bottom dollar that they will stop contributing to their 401ks because they are scared to death. What they will not stop doing is contributing to their emergency savings account because it's there their money is safe. They feel secure. They see it growing. They're not looking at the statements that are going from, oh my God, I just put in $300 and it's now worth $200. So this benefit, especially during these times, will be the benefit that most employees will be gravitating to if their employer is smart enough to offer it. Well, and that ties into, there's two proposals before Congress right now. Um, one that, which is similar to the program you have, will allow um, employers to enroll their workers in emergency savings accounts where they could save up to $2,500 um, and any excess going to their 401k, where the other would let workers withdraw from their 401k uh, without penalty. Um which do you th- which of those proposals do you think is better or do you prefer? Well, for us, I think ultimately what you're noticing here, Lauren, is, is that there's a recognition that for retirement security, which the broader Secure Act and Rise and Shine and the Earn Act, there's a number of pieces of legislation all kind of combining together over the next few months. They're all kind of ta- targeted as retirement security. And we think that there's a great focus on the intersection of retirement security and emergency savings, that you really have to have that foundational emergency savings in order to have better retirement security long term. And so we're excited that legislators are connecting those dots. And we've been involved in those conversations and sharing data. You know, for us, from a product standpoint, we've always felt that ultimately, you have to make solutions for emergency savings as easy with as minimal restrictions and as much flexibility and ease of use um, for the employee. Otherwise, they won't use it. And ultimately, emergency savings somewhat counterintuitively works best when you give people as much flexibility and control over those dollars as possible. And so that's what we've encouraged legislators is, you know, you really have to separate this from the retirement account. That's kind of the first thing that ultimately, if you, as Susie talked about, if you treat people or let them treat their retirement account as a short term piggy bank, they're not going to have good long term retirement security. And so We are big believers that you need to separate and put emergency savings somewhere different, treat it differently, but give them full control and access. But there's also this concept, unfortunately, that in our country, a lot of people still don't have a retirement plan through their work. And so if you're going to connect emergency savings too much to 401k plans or 403bs, you're going to leave a big chunk of the population out of the ability to save for emergencies. And so we're big proponents of keeping it separate and apart, keeping it easy and and fully accessible, 
but also you got to have a solutions that support those people that don't have a retirement plan at work. You know, do you think this this legislation, these proposals go far enough? They could go further. Uh, I'm always hesitant to give legislators and policymakers too many ideas and, and things to ponder. You know, it's hard enough to get legislation passed uh, in any respects. And so we've been very focused on auto enrollment, letting employers automatically enroll their employees into fully accessible, totally in their control, free to the employee emergency savings accounts, whether they have a 401k plan or something similar or not. That is the best and fastest path to getting emergency savings in the pockets of Americans. Uh, and anything else out there is is probably just going to add complexity and complications and delays to what ultimately we all need and want to see, which is more Americans with emergency savings ready to spend. What does it say that we have to legislate this? Auto enrollment is, uh, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. What does it say? Um, I don't know. What do you think, Susie? You've been, you've been following uh, stuff like this, you know, back to the 401k and HSAs. You've seen and you've even testified on Capitol Hill, I think, a couple times, right? Obviously, we almost had to legislate 401ks and automatic enrollment and that you had to opt out and all these things. And I think here's the real key. More important than what's happening with the government or are they going to pass it or are they not? whatever it may be, the mere fact that they're thinking about it shows you that there is a need for it, that they are recognizing they're seeing savings account levels go down. Probably they're seeing debt go up. Probably they're seeing retirement accounts being withdrawn from, and they're seeing the potential of a problem down the road that are we creating a welfare state? That once you have inflation and you have all these other things, is the government going to have to take care of most of the people because they won't have any money? So how do they solve that problem right now before it goes in that direction? And I'm sure they on their own are recognizing this. We obviously didn't go to them and say, can you do this? We were doing this before that ever happened. I've been talking about emergency savings accounts for 40 years now. I've been banging it and banging it and banging it because I knew what would happen to people when they didn't have one. And how did I know that? that? Because of the Susie Orman show and the 10,000 emails that we would get a week. And every one of them got into trouble. How? By an emergency, not having an emergency savings account. And then you could see it snowball from there. Well, when you talk about that snowball, like what does that look like? Like if you're dipping into your retirement savings, what is that looking like five, 10 years down the line? So first of all, you've got to get that. I was so upset, honest to God, when the government allowed people to withdraw $100,000 from their account. They allowed them to do that at the exact time that the stock market was skyrocketing skyrocketing, right? So they missed out on a tremendous amount of growth, especially if they were near retirement at that time. Number two, 401ks and IRAs are protected against bankruptcy. So if you are really in a horrific situation and you have all this debt, you're underwater, whatever, you know, with everything and you need to claim bankruptcy to get rid of that, you still have your retirement accounts. If you start taking money from your retirement accounts simply to pay bills and use it for anything other than retirement, you're going to use up all the money that was protected against bankruptcy to pay bills. Now you don't have the money to do so. And now you claim bankruptcy and now you are totally penniless. So so if you can't pay your bills while you have a paycheck coming in, how are you going to pay for those exact same bills later on in life when you no longer have a paycheck coming in called retirement? Social Security is in trouble. They're thinking about postponing Social Security ages. They've just recently for 20, you know, 23 are increasing the amount of money that people will have to pay tax into the Social Security system. So Social Security is in trouble, we are in trouble, and the only people that are going to save 
us is us, is us. So you cannot use your retirement account for today's expenses. That is for when you retire. We're living longer right now. So that retirement account has to be bigger. So you have to put in an emergency savings account as part of your financial equation. Otherwise, you will probably find yourself in a situation you never, ever, ever want to be in. When should you start doing that? Is it, I mean, is it ever too late to start if you're starting from scratch to do that? Listen, $10 is better than nothing. $50 is better than $10. $100 is better than whatever, $50. So it's never too late to start because really sometimes $200, $400 can make a world of difference in your situation. And once you start saving and you look at it, it's like, oh my God, I like it. I like it. It's not only easy, I don't miss it, but it's my freedom account as well. You know, it's yours. And sometimes things happen in life and you should have a little account that's just yours that nobody can get at. It's at where you work just to keep you safe and sound. For people who don't have that, who don't have Secure Save or a program like it, what should they be doing um, to maintain that level, that emergency fund? Well, obviously, they should be doing it on their own. Right? But listen, Lauren, they're just not going to. The word, you know, what should people be doing? You know, the, one of the, the second books I wrote back in 1997 was called The Nine Steps to Financial Freedom. And that book was like the number one book of all books for almost a year or two of any kind of book. And the premise of that book was, why don't people do that which they know they should do when it comes to money? Why don't they? And it's a very complicated answer but it goes way back. So money has a charge with it. You know, if you think about it, you and your money are one. You're the one who has to go out and earn it. You get a paycheck. You decide to save it, to spend it, to give it, to whatever it is. And so a lot of times we have this emotional block, not only about ourselves, but about money as well. We kind of just don't want to deal with it. That's why everybody waits till April 15th to do their taxes. They just don't want to deal with it. So usually people have to hit rock bottom before they make a change, before they, you know, otherwise they'll use up, they use their credit card, but they'll start to change when they don't have any credit limit left. They have no place to go. They've taken their money out of their 401ks and they're, you know, about to be kicked out of their place that they're living, then something kicks in. We're hoping that people don't have to get to that place. We're hoping that because we've made it so easy for them, they don't even know it's happening, right? It's, you know, human resources connects everything up. It's the most simple thing for a company to deploy, you know, they get an email saying, hey, you want to do this? If they click, they put how much money they want taken out of a paycheck. And that is it. It's done for them. And because it's done for them, they love doing it. People are so overwhelmed right now with living. People are so overwhelmed about anything when it comes to money. People are so afraid right now, Lauren, because they see their money that they've been saving for years start to deplete. They see what's happening out there. So it has paralyzed them. So you could tell people from now until doomsday, they should do something. That's why we need to help do it for them. And then what they say is, you know what they all say? Why didn't I do this a long time ago? Right? But it's, 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 I've tried for 40 years, I've tried to change the mindset of people. People change when they're ready to. They don't do what they're told to do. They do it when they know they have to do it. Do you have 
both of you, a sort of um, tough love take for our audience, something that they should hear right now that maybe they don't necessarily want to hear or that would be good for them? I don't have tough love for them. I have compassion for them. I have feelings for them. I have understanding for the fear that they're going through. So the main thing that I could tell them is fear, shame, and anger are the three main internal obstacles to wealth. That to have more, you have to be more. So what I would tell all of you to do is if you really want a place to come that's free, that you hear about money, that resonates with you, because it's not just about the money you have, it's about the money you don't have, join me on my Women and Money podcast. It's twice a week. People love it. People's lives have been changed by it, not because I changed their life, because they heard something that rang true for them. So no harshness for this audience, just a lot of love and compassion. Yeah, and we, um, I was smiling at that question, Lauren, because very much that lives through in the Secure Safe product. It's all about positive reinforcement, nudging people to the behavior we know that they want um, and need, and just making it easy for them, keep giving them that sense of security. Um, you know, we feel like trust is really important that we need to build with them and, and they need to trust that we're going to be there to support with them, not judge them, help them through. And, and that's, you know, a big part of what we try and deliver for Secure Safe. Hmm. Amazing. Thank you very much. I, I love that compassion. Uh, we could definitely use a lot more of it. 